Hello and welcome to a new Blender Developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I present you in this episode amazing improvements in the viewport, the Cycles render engine, Blender player and the node editor. All of those found its way into the soon to be released Blender version 2.76 and if you'd like to support me and make sure that more videos are created more frequently then use the Amazon link in the video description to buy my German Blender book or buy other stuff from Amazon with the link. But now I wish you a lot of fun and joy with the following sneak peek. So let's look at the viewport improvements in the Blender 2.75 release that I've opened here. Um, we have 2.5 million uh, vertices now with an array modifier of uh, with a count of five and the viewport level of the subdivision modifier of five. And as you see here, it's quite choppy. And when I decrease the array modifier count, then you see it gets better. And with three on my computer, on yours could be different, uh, but on my computer with an i7, and um, then it's really fluent. So uh, with 1.5 million uh, vertices in the old blender, it was very fluent. Keep that in mind when I change to the 2.76 release now. And there you see we got 10 million, poly, uh, 10 million vertices now. And um, as you see, it's still fluent. And when I increase it to a count of five, then you see it's pretty do doable still. So 10 until 12 million vertices is the magical limit for my PC here. But as you can see here, it's really much faster. It's a factor of five that uh, the viewport drawing increased. And just as a last tip, please keep in mind that when you select uh, an object in the viewport, the Blender has to draw this viewport several times and that makes it slower. So even in the uh, 10 million range that is normally very fluent for me, uh, it will be sloppy when you select the objects. So deselecting is fluent and selecting it, it's choppier. Let's now look at the OpenSubdiv implementation in Blender. OpenSubdiv is from uh, Pixar. It's an open source library that is capable of subdividing surfaces, like our subdivision surface modifier that we get in Blender already. But uh, this library has several pros. The first one is that you have um, a consistent implementation over all applications that are using it. So when you are exporting it from Maya or from Max and importing it into Blender and so on, then it's all and it should be all the same, looking the same. Uh, then we have an adaptive subdivision possibility that is not in Blender yet but uh, that makes it possible to subdivide it in certain parts of the mesh more than in other parts. And, and that is uh, for now the biggest improvement, um, it's going on the GPU. So the uh, tessellated mesh is directly held in GPU and therefore utilizing the graphic processor and therefore very fast. So how is this? Um, looking in Blender, you might ask, and that is the scene I prepared. Uh, it's a simple, dis let me just disable this uh, modifier so you can see that better. It's a simple displacement uh, texture that is um, applied at uh, Suzanne and an empty that is moving from right to left. And as you can see, the displacement texture is deforming with the empty because I set this object um, field with the empty. And when I now enable the subdivision surface modifier at a level of five, then you may guess already that it's much smaller. As you can see here, only eight or nine frames per second. And the cool thing at the um, open subdiv library now is that you have one checkbox here that you could enable and when you do that then everything is fluent and fast.
To enable that and make use of the GPU, you have to go to the user preferences under system and in system there is open subdiv compute and there are four different options. None is, as you may guess, uh, completely useless for you when you like to use open subdiv because that's not using it. But CPU is doing every calculation on the CPU, OpenMP with symmetrical multiprocessoring, GLSL transform feedback and compute are both operating on the GPU and GS GLSL compute is faster than transform feedback. Um, when you use uh, the open subdiv, then please make sure that the subdivision surface modifier is the last one in the stack. Because when it's um, above, uh, for example, displacement modifier, and as you can see here, uh, Blender is not prone to crashes uh, at the moment. But um, when you would like to move that up, then you will see that the um, open subdiv library has no effect. But uh, when it's at the, it's the last on the stack, then it will be much faster. And even the Blender player got an update in this version. I rendered out this animation already as an OpenGL file. So when I now start the Blender player via this menu entry, play rendered animation or by hitting Ctrl and F11, then you can see that is the Blender player that we love and have since ever. But when you now hit spacebar, then you can hold the animation, you can stop the and pause the animation. When you um, press spacebar again, then the animation is uh, restarted again. And when you hit I on your keyboard, then an indicator is drawn, as you can see, that uh, gives you a rough estimation as where your movie is uh, at the end or at the start. When you move your mouse, then you can move this uh, indicator to the position that you like. Holding shift will blend in there some, some uh, further information about your frames. And when your animation has some um, audio in it, then the audio is now played back also. So that makes it really easy to preview your animation with the internal player. And thanks for sci-fi I think and now let's go to the cycles features let's now come to a really cool cycles features and that is the point density texture support you find this under um, shift a texture and point density I set up this object vertices texture for you already and in another scene the particle system uh, point density texture so I show you everything and every setting but please make sure first that you have switched your device to CPU and not GPU because under GPU, as I demonstrated here, is nothing uh, renderable because the uh, GPU is not supported at the moment, but the CPU is. And as you can see here, it's rendering a point cloud. And this point cloud consists of every vertex that is in this object, as you can see here. And uh, 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 around every vertex is a point density texture uh, rendered with this radius. The resolution is something that I show you in the other scene that I prepared for you. Um, the interpolation is exactly the same. I show you, showed it that a bit later. But um, just how you set up this, um, this uh, Toros is really simple. You go to the uh, point dens density node, then you click this, um, this eye picker, go to your viewport, select the Toros, and then you set the space. Object space is the object, is the, the mapping in the object space as it's set and our world space is in the world space so you can move your uh, torus around um, and the uh, mapping would change um, with the radius you are just increasing the radius of every uh, point around the vertex so to say and with the multiply uh, node that i set up behind this point density uh, texture is just an uh, increasement or decreasement of the um, thickness of the cloud possible. So when I do an 
for example, 0 0.9 uh, value here, then you see it's much thinner than when I created a 103 point value. So that is everything for the um, vertex, for the point density vertices uh, texture. And now let's come to the particle system. The particles are, let me just switch off the render first. The particles are a bit more trickier than the, uh, the um, vert object vertices um, texture, but it's easy if you understand how, it's, how it works. First of all, you've got a mesh here. This mesh consists of a particle system and this particle system has the volume option turned on. Let me just show you uh, so everything is clear. Um, the particle system is a typical emitter system with start and end of uh, in the zero position. So every uh, particle is emitted directly. We got a bunch of particles. That's not important to match exactly this number. We got a volume option set up. So um, as you can see here, it's inside the um, the mesh. Then random to make to give it a bit more randomness, and that is everything. So after setting this up, you um, have to have a domain around your object. I prepared this domain and this domain should have a scale of one. So everything is nice and in line with your uh, original object. And after that, you have to create a point density texture, as you can see here, that is lying on your domain. So the domain is the um, point density holder and your mesh just uh, needs to be uh, seeable or visible as long as this is not set up because when you set this up via the eye picker again, object cloud mesh, and then normally there is nothing selected here. Then you have to select your particle system, the cloud particles. Um, when you've done this, then you can um, disable this, the visibility of your cloud mesh and select the uh, cloud bounce again. And then you could start your render and see that it's producing a uh, nice textured cloud. And when you now decrease the resolution, I promise to show you what this does. Then you see that we got some grid uh, looking effect here. Let's decrease it even more to 20. Everything, every one of those grid elements means that is one voxel. Your domain is subdivided in voxels. And with this resolution slider, you set the resolution of your domain grid. So the higher this resolution, the smaller those voxels and the less likely, likely you see those voxels. So that is, let's now uh, do a 30 resolution here and then I'll show you what the interpolation does. The interpolation is um, doing an interpolation, as the name implies, between those voxels. So when we got closest, then it's no, uh, no, almost no or no uh, interpolation. When you set this to linear, then you see, first of all, that we got, I think, a bug here. I, I'll uh, talk with Sergey, the developer that developed this, um, to, to, uh, to make sure that this won't reach the new uh, Blender version. But as you can see here, we got some um, interpolation going on between those voxels already. And when I do um, set this interpolation value to cubic, then it's even better interpolated. And as you can see, it's really barely noticeable um, that we got voxels at all. So cubic is really the best option if you'd like to have smooth and cl smooth cloudy structures and turning up the resolution by um, and using closest, for example, 100, uh, by using closes will give you still noticeable um, artifacts here. So I'd go with linear for a, f for a start, then a pretty high resolution, 100 is good for a start, and then you can try to experiment and post your videos or your images in the comments. 
Another cool feature for cycles is now the uh, expose uh, the the exposer of the um, clip type extension. So let me just preview that so you can see it. Um, there we have a uh, simple plane, uh, three simple planes, and this first plane is just using an image texture um, to diffuse uh, node sh uh, then a mix shader with the material output so nothing fancy at all but we got a new clip type here and this um, this clip uh, setting does the following when I scale my image um, no it doesn't matter if I scale it up or down then it limits the image to exactly the chosen image so it's not repeating the image as before before this uh, setting we had uh, repeating images in cycles that you could uh, circumvent by uh, enabling min and max and setting, setting that accordingly but now it's much more easy just set clip and it's done so you could uh, do some decal decaling stuff or something like that the other thing is the um, the extends um, type and extend is doing uh, almost the same but it's um, extending the pixels that are at the border of the image to the outside so as you can see here that's the Im that's the image when I enable clip then you can see the border of the image when I now set it to extend, then all those pixels are extended towards the edges of the um, of the image. And the third and last option is the repeat. And repeat is doing the same as uh, before when you when we didn't had, had this option. Repeat is just repeating the um, the image across the um, the plane. So when I, for example, uh, set the scale factor to 10, then we get it scaled up 10 times by 10 times. So um, this will help you with your texturing in cycles. Another goodie is awaiting us in the node editor. This feature has been implemented by Julian Eisel in the Leipzig Summer of Code, held by Sebastian König and his co-workers. That's a great addition and um, it's the auto offset of nodes. There is a new symbol here that says automatically offset the following or previous nodes in a chain when inserting a new node. And what that does is simply put when you uh, drag and drop a node onto an existing connection, then the uh, previous nodes or the uh, nodes after the node you inserted are shifted to the right or to the left. To the left is uh, possible by when you drag and drop by hitting T that's uh, toggling the direction as you can see here. And when you uh, disable this button then it's just doing nothing as you can see here. It's behaving like before just inserting it uh, will have no effect. And when you enable it again and duplicate that again, then you see it's working again. And this concludes the developer sneak peek already. I hope that you had fun watching and learning new stuff. And I hope to see you on my Google Plus, YouTube and Twitter page. Please share it to make the new features well known. And now, happy planning. Bye.